So hello, welcome to my session. I am truly appreciated for your attendance to this conference and in particular this event. Today, my topic is all about um, all the research I have done for the past few years. So it is kind of hard for me to put, put together a definitive title for the talk. But anyway, here it is. I'm going to talk about feature-based approach for structural aging analysis. And my name is Yu Guo Yu. Currently, I'm an associate professor at Guangzhou University, China. Um, there are five parts in today's session. Firstly, I'm going to talk a little about, my, about myself. Then I will break my whole research today into three major contributions, followed by Q&A sessions if we've got time. Um, as you can see, feasibility-based aging modeling is the, really the core of my research. Um, in the uh, past few years, I've also tested uh, the water of uh, machine learning, given that it is a hot topic, but really in terms of the why, I will be addressing that today. Also, I will talk about my current pursuit of multi-physical analysis and how it is connected with the aging of construction materials and the structures. So about me, I hold a BE, ME, and a PhD in civil engineering. During uh, my master's study at South China University of Technology, I worked on a theoretical study on boundary behavior of FRP to concrete interface. Though it was not directly linked to the whole feature based aging analysis, it still dealt with aging and the damage to structures. Because as you know, FRP is often applied in structural retrofitting. Um, my PhD study is where we all begins, right? I completed my PhD at University of New South Wales. As you can see, I worked on numerical analysis of mineralogical and the mechanical deterioration of cementitious materials under various leaching and external sulfur attack. I have experience in um, working in both academia and the relevant industry. Back when I was a master's student, I worked as a structure engineer at a local firm. After the graduation, after PhD graduation, I worked consecutively as a research associate at Western Sydney University and UNSW before landing on my current position at the Guangzhou University. My research, I mean, um, strictly from PhD onwards, is all about developing physics based framework for comprehensive assessment of aging materials and structures. That includes construction material aging analysis, high fidelity corrosion prediction, machine learning aided reliability assessment, and a time dependent structural aging modeling. The fundamental innovation of the whole thing reside in the ability to solve complex multi-physical problems in a scientifically robust manner. Moreover, the framework I developed is module oriented, which is not only modification friendly, but also ready for application in the engineering practices. Now, let's take a look at um, the first part, which is the physics based aging modeling. I will introduce the fundamental first, then move on to what we can actually achieve with this approach and what I have actually achieved in the past few years of research work. So combining aging and the corrosion together as they are inseparable issues for most of the engineering practices. It is utterly obvious that the whole process is time dependent, right? So moreover, it is a multi-physical and uncertain process. In a world, it is quite complex if you really, really want to like simulate the whole thing. So uh, speaking of its multi-physical nature, first we can all acknowledge that the porous median of concrete is always susceptible to ionic exchange, right? And heat conduction and also moisture advection when in contact with the external environment. All of these phenomena will cause interaction with the hydration products that eventually alter the overall material characteristics. To sum it up, I put, it, I put them into three aspects and they are physical transportation, chemical reaction, and damage accumulation. 
To this end, an integrated method free from using empirical models and able to simulate the time-dependent aging corrosion process is introduced here. And I call it chemophysical modeling, the CPM modeling. In accordance with the three aspects, the CPM model also consists of three major components, where the first one is to model the physical transportation. I integrate the Poisson, ratio, uh, Poisson equation as well as the Fourier heat conduction equation, and I modify the general form of the solute conservation equation for improved ability in terms of describing the moisture transportation, chemical induced uh, transportation effect, and uh, as well as the chemical binding, such as chloride binding. For more details on the model developments, you may want to refer to these two papers as listed on screen. For chemical reactions, I hold the world feed-based modeling dearly to the method development. So empirical models of any kinds will not be used. They will not be used. Instead, I combine thermodynamic modeling and the chemical kinetic modeling approach to account for all kinds of potential chemical reactions that may occur during the concrete aging process. The method is very, very powerful as it basically can function as a blank slate where the researchers can choose what kind of detailed reactions that they want to include based on the specific problem they have at hand. Finally, for evaluating mechanical deterioration, what I do is to use an analytical micromechanics. The specific method that I, my approach is based on the effective median theory. With that, I further expand it into a mixed effective median theory, which incorporates advantages of three popular methods. And they are self-consistent method, mori tanaka method, and the interaction direct derivative. By doing so, the MEMT method, which is the mixed effective median theory, is able to deal with arbitrary degrees of pore connectivity and quark density, so as, so as to accurately estimate the variations in material properties. However, just a, um, an illegal model is not enough, as chemical induced aging degradation in general directly attack concrete at its finest scale. That is why we also need a multi-scale homogenization scheme, scheme to translate the chemophysical data uh, decay into overall material damages at a macro scale. Right here, I generally follow this three level of homogenization scheme where the cement paste level is the most complex, which is also the, uh, the proposed MEMT model comes into play. You see in this level with the CSH as the matrix, the complicated part is actually in the, in, in the inclusions. Depending on the saturation and the damage level, we are going to have percolated, which means connected and isolated the pole system at the same time. However, due to uh, thanks to the MENT model, we can consider this kind of phenomenon simultaneously using what we have already proposed. With all the essential components for the chemophysical uh, mechanical model, the CPM model, the final missing piece is how to put them together, make them function, right? So to this end, a very, very straightforward numerical framework is developed to facilitate the modeling. The key idea of this framework follows a predator splitting approach. By doing so, as you can see, all three essential components runs in a sequential manner during the simulation. Now, with the CPM model, which is quite complicated from the mathematical point of view, whatever, the most sensible questions right now to ask is what the method can do, right? So based on my experience and my past research, here's what I can confirm. Firstly, it can produce accurate degradation depths. Also, detailed distribution of solid hydrate, uh, solid hydrate composition, uh, detrimental chemicals, and certain uh, elements of interest. It can also predict the mechanical degradation 
of material as well as the substance accumulation in the surrounding areas for pollution assessment. Furthermore, the CPA model can also be used to generate uncertain analysis of all the affirmation properties. For this, I will talk about it later. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, case study that I have achieved in the past few years. Firstly, for laboratory problems, I have done numerical modeling of leaching, carbonation, accelerated leaching, aerosol attack, chloride attack, and external sulfur attack. In the modeling of external sulfur attack, as my research can take the cracking suction effect into account, the sulfur content and the sulfur layer were much better predict. As you can see from the picture right here in the red dashed line, you can see the sulfur content and the sulfur layer were much better predicted by using my approach, right? With that, I can also better predict the time dependent degradation of various mechanical properties at a homogenized microscopic level, such as elastic modulus by using the MEMT. For accelerated leaching, with the CPA model, I can completely ditch the empirical casting leaching isotherm and acquire way more than just a leach depth. For example, I can acquire the change of porosity, the detailed hydration, uh, hydric composition, such as this one, and a calcium to silicate ratio under any arbitrary duration of accelerated leaching. I've also done some numerical study on the laboratory problems with real life conditions. And this is more associated with uh, practical issues on the aging corrosion under construction defects. The defect here I'm talking about is those gaps at the steel concrete interface. Right? It usually appears due to unidirectional casting, where the gaps may become larger and larger with the increase of vertical height. Right? So due to the existence of this gap, the steel is more prone to corrosion upon activation by you know, chloride ingress or carbonation, whatever. So I did a piece of research, which demonstrate that my uh, which demonstrates that my approach can precisely capture the corrosion current density, regardless of the severity of the defects and the degree of concrete aging, as you can see from the picture right here. So regardless of the uh, severity of the defects, I can predict the uh, corrosion degree very, very well. Finally, I have also adopted the CPA model to some few study cases. This is one example regarding the 20 year chloride attack on a reinforced concrete car park. As a real life problem, you know, the detailed surface conditions experiences seasonal changes in both temperature and uh, relative humidity. In addition, due to the location of this car park, uh, as I can recall, this car park resides in Canada. So there's application of chloride based de-icing salt in the winter. So I ran the simulation. Fundamentally, this problem is about uh, modeling a non-isothermal chloride ingress under unsaturated condition, right? So as you can see, my approach is able to predict the detailed chloride content distribution inside a concrete cover very, very well after 20 years of exposure. With all these successful uh, applications, one thing uh, for sure is that one thing for sure is that the proposed CPM model, the chemophysical mechanical model, is capable of generating accurate aging corrosion predictions for a variety of service conditions. Now, let's move on to the second major part of today's presentation, where I introduce the machine learning into the mix of physics based aging analysis. And the first question, as I say, is about the why, right? Well, for that, Maybe you can still recall that a couple slides ago, I claimed that my pH, uh, my, uh, my approach can be used for uncertainty analysis, right? So yes, it really can. But the problem is that it is very, very time consuming, like out of a hand. 
So as there is no way to find a uh, analytical solution to the CPM model, we have to count on Monte Carlo simulations for evaluating uncertainty. However, if you do this, the accuracy becomes completely dependent on the number of repeated computations that you run. Now, if each in single run is based on the CPM, just imagine how intractable the whole thing would be, right? So therefore, the true reason for me to introduce some machine learning into the mix is really about improving the computational efficiency. That's it. That's the why. So that is the why. Now, what about how? Basically, if the simulation is a strictly based on CPM, right? Uh, this is what we are. This is what happens. We have some inputs, right? that representing the service condition and the initial material properties, et cetera, et cetera. We put them into the CPM model, right? Which will eventually give us aging response that we want to get, whatever the outputs that we want. So this is what happened if we based on the simulation entirely on the CPM model. It is very clear that the time consuming part of this whole thing is the CPM itself. So what if we can replace it with say a black box, right? The computational efficiency will be, will be like greatly improved. And yes, this is the solution that, that I have. What I was trying to do is basically to construct a, a surrogate relation using the machine learning to replace the CPM model. That's what I'm trying to do. However, this is not an easy task. As the actual problem we deal with is multi-physical and highly nonlinear. So for this matter, I developed a kernelized extended support vector regression model based on the conventional SVR for enhanced nonlinear regression capability. In order to build the surrogate model, the formulation of the XSVR, well, which is the extended support vector regression, the SSVR is further modified by optimization and solved as a quadratic programming problem. For more details, you may want to refer to the reference listed below. So by using the XSVR, I have tackled a variety of problems, including um, stochastic aging, analysis, uh, aging leaching analysis on concrete and also fiber cement composite. Stochastic, stochastic long-term chloride attack analysis is something I have already, uh, also have already done also, the stochastic static structure, uh, structural reliability analysis on the functionally graded material. And last but not least, uh, and also structural aging corrosion analysis on reinforced concrete. Another one is a stochastic sulfur attack on marine structures. This work can all be found in the reference listed below. For today's presentation, I will spend more time on this one. This is what I'm going to talk about, the stochastic software attack analysis on marine structures, just for today's showcase. So um, what's so special about this one is when we first think about seawater, the first thing that comes into our mind is that it is highly salted and full of chloride, right? But actually seawater is also full of sulfur iron, where sulfur attack is a real issue. And it is very destructive that can, uh, that can cause expensive cracking failure. And so in this research, I mainly focus on the stochastic sulfur attack on artificial reef structures made of concrete. And I further advanced the XSVR into a novel self-adaptive XSVR, the SAXSVR. By doing so, I give the model an ability to do classification based on the distinctive uh, attack degrees so as to perform cluster-wise the regression. As you can see right here, it's, a, it's clustering based on the, um, uh, the, the detailed software attack degrees. As you can see, based on this approach, a much better prediction on the response of a, a stochastic software attack can be achieved with significantly lesser computational efforts. As I have tested, the efficiency is over 100 times 
rather than running the crude Monte Carlo simulation by using the only the CPM model. Now let's move on to the last part, the last major part of today's presentation, where I'm heading towards multi-physics. With this title, you may be wondering that, well, the CPM is already a multi-physical model. So what do you mean? So what I mean here is that, yes, the CPM has already tackled a chemophysical degradation of material under various sur uh, surface condition. That's correct. However, the CPM alone is not capable of considering simultaneous structure effect. Therefore, it cannot simulate the actual in situ structures where aging and the mechanical loading are in place. However, in practice, these two are always mutually influenced and cannot be separated, right? They cannot be separated. With that in mind, I recently moved on to this new research direction. And the first problem I tackled is about performance decay assessment on the uh, cementitious composite clocking structures, which involves the comprehensive material aging analysis, time-dependent structure failure analysis, and uh, if uncertainty is involved, there's also structural reliability analysis. For research purpose in this study, uh, I designed this specimen to represent the typical facade cladding made of fiber cement composite. And the leaching is chosen as the aging factor to simulate the situation of long-term contact with water, such as uh, rainfall, et cetera. Based on the simulation, I first acquired the detailed distribution of various major cement hydro products. Uh, with variation of cement hydrate, it is obvious that the porosity will change as well, leading to a non-uniform and a time-dependent degradation in terms of the material elastic modulus. The degradation of material elasticity will eventually cause the bearing capacity of the structure to decrease, right? It may subsequently experience a premature failure due to sudden rupture under small deformation. To study this phenomenon, I further couple the CPM model with the novel phase field approach to fracture for obtaining crack patterns of aging facade cladding structures. With this approach, I can also acquire the, acquire the detailed low deformation curves of the structure over the course of one year in surface under the leaching environment. In this figure, I actually also consider the intrinsic material uncertainty. So that's why you also see the curves at 10, uh, a, a, a day zero, day, uh, 60, day 160, and a day 360 as a range contours. That's because I also include intrinsic material uncertainty into the, into the numerical simulation. So under this material uncertainty, I further plug in the proposed excess VR model for testing the efficiency in aging structure performance analysis. As you can see, the excess VR can generate precise predictions in terms of time-dependent remaining bearing capacity in compared to the crude MCS uh, with much lesser computational effort. By giving a reference bearing capacity limit, which is something uh, that you may be find available from the relevant design code, I can further compute the time-dependent reliability very quickly with very, very high accuracy. As you can see from the table right here, the relative error is very, very small, right? So yeah, uh, that's basically all about today's presentation. In the future, I may further explore some other research directions such as the uh, material decay under diverse environments I will also assist the performance. I will also explore the topic about assisting performance-based new material designs and uh, algorithmic advancement for efficient computing. And this is really more targeting only CPM model itself because what we have already known is that the machine learning can uh, accelerate 
the uncertainty quantification. So this one, the algorithmic ad advancement for efficient computing is really more targeting on the CPA model itself. And the other one is that I also want to explore the comprehensive aging structure analysis more. Right now, I thought what I have already done is only about the, uh, uh, the aging, uh, aging failure of uh, for subclocking structures. I want to explore more in the future. And the last but not least is about supplement modern structural health monitoring. That's, this is something what I really, really want to do in the future. So uh, that will be it. If, you, if we still have time, maybe we can have a little discussion or you can always reach out to me by this email. So thanks, for you, thanks very much for your time and your attention. Hope we can build some collaborations together if you are interested in my field of research. So thank you, thank you very much.